Hi friends, welcome to Happy Nursing. This is Ila and today we will discuss about Roy's adaptation model of nursing, which was given by Sister Calista Roy. The theory is named after her. As is very evident from the name that the main concept here is adaptation. Adaptation means changing or modifying one or more parts of an individual in order to adjust with the environment. Sister Calista defined adaptation as the goal of nursing. That means nurses should have the objective in their mind that I have to help my patient to adapt. That should be her goal. For example, when a child is admitted to the hospital, say his parents are not allowed with him. So it's difficult for him to stay alone. Whenever he faces any problem regarding eating, drinking, his toiletries, whatever, he is asking for his mom. And that's very obvious also. So the nurse's goal should be to help him adjust with the new environment. She defined person as adaptive system. Person always adapts himself with the changing environment. For example, if we continue with our former situation, the child will make a fuss about everything without his parents for a few days. But after that, when the nurse makes him understand that his parents won't be allowed here and he can go back once he is fully cured, he will start to comply. After a few days, he will develop a habit of doing his daily activities with the nurse without asking for his mom. Environment is said here to be full of stimuli which will help the person or drive the person to adapt. Health is said as outcome of adaptation. Why? Because the more difficulty he has to adapt with the environment, the more his health will be affected. For example, the above child refuses to take medicine without his mother on the first day. But then, after adapting to the environment, he takes his medicine and that will help him to preserve his health. Nursing is defined as promoting adaptation and health. This is obvious from the example. I don't think any explanation is needed here. A nurse is constantly helping the patient to adjust to his environment and promoting his health as a result. So nursing is promoting adaptation and health. This model is applied through a process consisting of four steps input, control process, effectors and output. In the first step that is input there are two things stimuli and adaptation level. Stimulus is such a thing which is creating a problem for us to thrive for which we need to make adjustments. Now there are three kinds of stimuli focal stimuli, contextual stimuli and residual stimuli. First one is focal stimuli. Focal means a stimuli which is immediately affecting an individual or a group of individuals. For example, the child from the above situation. First day, when his mother was not with him, he did what? He refused to take medicines. So that was his initial response to the stimuli. The response which he is able to give immediately at that point of time. So separation from his mother was the focal stimulus there. Second one is contextual stimuli. The, uh, these are additional number of stimuli which are altogether causing or contributing to the main focal stimuli. For example, the child is separated from his mother. So that is the focal stimulus we all know. But what all stimuli are those which caused this separation? It can be a number of causes like the child was sick. So he was to, hosp uh, to be hospitalized. His sickness was not treatable at home, etc. So all this led to the separation. So these are the contextual stimuli. Because all this together led to the focal stimulus, that is separation from his mother. Third one is the residual stimuli. It actually doesn't have any direct relation with the response, but sometimes the nurse can identify the stimulus from her experience. For example, when the child refuses to take medicines, it's very clear that he is being separated and that's why he is doing so. But a nurse from her experience can make out that the additional cause behind this behavior may be seeking the attention. As the nurse is experienced in taking care of many children before, so she knows that some of them have this attention seeking behavior. They have temper tantrums. Maybe the child is thinking in his mind that if I throw tantrums, everyone will be extra caring to me and that is acting as an internal residual stimulus. The stimuli which are coming from the outside are known as external stimuli and those coming from within our minds are internal stimuli. So there is no clear idea but a nurse can make that out from her previous experience that is the residual stimulus. After that comes the adaptation level. This is the power of adapting to the environment somehow and it differs from person to person. 
some do it through positive ways some do it through negative ways some take a lot of time to adapt some adjust very easily but they all adapt to their environment now it also has three levels integrated process compensatory process and compromised process first one is integrated process integrated process means all the aspects of life are going on very smoothly not smoothly actually means all the aspects are working in such a way that i am able to adjust with my environment for example my job life is going fine uh, i have shifting duty so some of my friends may have problem in their family for that but i don't have any problem in my family my family is very supportive for the long working hours my office is far but i can easily arrange means of transport daily my health is fine so everything is integrated that is integrated process next is compensatory process this is actually when we have to compensate means a challenge has arrived everything was going well but suddenly i have been shifted to another department now there i have a new environment new role new people so now i have to make adjustments with that that is compensatory process third one is compromised process that is when the adaptation level is compromised it can be physical or mental for example if we continue with our previous situation say i am not able to cope with the new job role given to me and i go into depression that is compromised process that was all about input next we have control process here comes uh, two more terms regulator and cognator whenever we are unable to cope with a new environment these two systems are activated control process is actually related to coping mechanisms which gives rise to the regulator or the cognator now what is regulator regulator is the involuntary adaptive process of our body which immediately responds through our body systems for example a student is called to the principal's office what happens she becomes tensed she began to sweat palpitation start uh, this is not done by her consciously this is the response of her body that is the regulator and what is cognator cognator is our mental coping mechanism that comes from our consciousness for example after being called from the principal's office the student starts to think in his mind in her mind have i done anything she tries to remember the fight she might have earlier that day then her mind starts to arrange the explanation how she will explain herself all this comes under the cognator system next we will discuss about the effectors effectors are those factors which affect our adaptation there are four modes of effectors physiological physical self concept group identity role function and interdependence first one is physiological physical here you can see two words physiological and physical roy used the word physiological for an individual and physical for a group of individuals when an individual will try to adjust with an environment he will uses physiological phenomena and when a group tries to adjust they will use physical activities it consists of five basic needs and four complex processes through which the physiological and physical phenomena help in adaptation what are they the five basic needs are oxygenation nutrition elimination activity and rest and the last one is protection and the four complex processes are senses fluid electrolyte and acid base balance neurologic function and endocrine function these are the mechanisms of our body which helps us to adjust with the environment next is self concept group identity we have talked regarding physiological aspect now we will talk about psychological aspect here also self concept is for an individual and group identity is for a group of individuals self concept is the concept of self means how an individual looks at himself now it has two parts physical self and personal self physical self is about the body image how an individual is seeing himself in terms of his body image some may have several distortions still they may think they look good and some with the actual good looks may think no i am not so good looking whereas personal self talks about the inner self the inner image not just the outer looks some think they are very strong and they can handle everything that comes through and some may be fully hopeless so that was all about self concept group identity our third effector is role function mode this is about adjusting to the different roles that we as an individual have to play in our life for example one may be a teacher as well as a mother as well as a homemaker again she is a daughter of somebody 
So, maintaining the different roles at different times is the role function mode which helps us to adjust with the social life. For example, while teaching as a teacher, she is continuously worried about her child. Again, while at home with her child, she is thinking about checking assignment of her students. That means she is not properly adjusted to the social life. So, we have talked about the physiological aspect, psychological aspect and this is the social aspect. Lastly, the interdependence mode. This talks about how we are dependent on each other for adapting to environment. How effectively we are adjusting and maintaining our relation with each other in the process. For example, when I am shifted to a new department, it's a problem for me to adapt. But I have a support system there. I have a colleague who, uh, who is, uh, you know, helping me to do my jobs, to understand the work culture there, introducing me to others. So, in this way, I used the interdependence mode to adjust with the environment. Now, coming to the output. After everything, am I able to adjust or not? That is the output, the result. Either I will be able to adapt, that will be an uh, effective response, or I won't be able to adapt, that will be an ineffective response. So, today we discussed about Roy's adaptation model, the major concepts of the model and the system, including input, control process, effectors and output. Input consists of stimuli and adaptation level. There are three kinds of stimuli, focal stimuli, contextual stimuli and residual stimuli. And there are three uh, levels of adaptation level, integrated process, compensatory process and compromise process. Control process includes regulator and cognitor and four kinds of effectors are there. Physiological, physical, self-concept, group identity, role function and interdependence and lastly the output. I hope you have understood the theory. If this video is useful to you, then please like and share this video and subscribe my channel. Meet you in the next video. Thank you for watching.